I got it. All right. It's already green. All right, you're good. Then. Meeting back from recess for the annual budget committee. Thank you. All right. We have the county extension office on the schedule. 2.15. Oops, I'm a minute late. Sorry, guys. Um, okay. Um, what's going on at the... Uh, on your part of our budget here, Christy. Hi, Christy Whitaker, uh, County Extension Director. We only have a slight increase we're asking in our contractual services amount line item. That's the amount that Purdue charges at, uh, us from our county budget each year. It was about $3,600. I did um, adjust our um, two line items to help make account for that. One of them's office supplies. I adjusted uh, down to 14,300. So that's a difference of $1,000 decrease. And also our mileage budget, I um, reduced it by $1,000 to help offset that slight increase. Those were the only changes. All others um, line items stayed the same. Well, don't make it too hard on us. This yeah. Year. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty, pretty easy this year. Are there any questions about any of the or anything to do with extension as far as that matter goes? Was your budget pretty uh, okay this year? It was. I've been the director now for four years, and each year I've gotten a little bit better seeing where our expenditures are. Um, we were relatively a new staff uh, when I took the director position five years ago, so now we're all more seasoned, and I can tell what our expenses are more um, and adjust better, and um, I felt our budget was adequate last year for sure. Do you see anything in the future that might uh, that worries you or is is everything pretty stable um uh, one worry i have going forward um is if we're going to be able to encumber in the future we have some expenses um, where purdue's billing is a little bit behind our billing system like our computer leases purdue is um, not good with getting us our bill timely so sometimes we do have to encumber that money each year we've had to encumber um, the computer lease money. So I didn't know if that could be a problem in the future as we look towards everybody's budget tightening, probably. I didn't know if you guys were considering holding encumbrances or not at this time, or if it's too soon to tell, maybe. No, that's an interesting question. I, I was thinking about you uh, last week. I saw a news story about the loss that Purdue is anticipating with their sports programs. I mean, they are really, really going to get hit, as is every uh, university that has a sports program. Uh, they're anticipating um, problems. But, you know, I think the Big Ten schools and, you know, places like Notre Dame and so on are just sucking it up because they don't know yeah, it's a I mean, scary it's not time. Be what it is in Purdue is, you know, Purdue, Indiana will really take a blow this year. Scary and time for could, sure. That could affect you. Oh, absolutely. I thought about the 4-H program. I thought, oh my goodness, absolutely. What, what could we expect? Yeah, all of our travel and um, education is suspended at this time as far as their budget for our um, travel is concerned. So they are already making some rules and regulations for us to follow. They're expecting a 25% decrease in freshman enrollment for people who attend campus. So that's gonna be a big hit to them as well. Times are definitely changing. Yeah. So our 4-H program is going strong. Fortunately, we had our fair. We were able to do in-person shows that were closed to the public last week. Um, we had still had Participation was down, but we still had um, great livestock shows, and everybody was super respectful, wore their masks. It was hot, and we were outside working with animals, so they were respectful and wore their masks, and I thought we did, did a really good job with that fair. 
you got good media coverage too. I I thought you really uh, presented, you know, presented well. You put it on, you know, and people really around here love the 4 H. You know, it's it's just so popular and, and yeah. you know good legs. I think, you know, the kids really look forward to it. Thank you. We were able to live stream each of those events. We've never done that before, so it's something um, that we'll look to do in the future. A lot of people who normally wouldn't have attended or had the chance to attend um, watch those live streams. So that's something that we had never considered that we might carry forward to. Silver lining. Yeah, yeah, there's some good things coming out from it as well. You know, any other questions? Nope, I'm good. Okay, I'm asking all the departments, uh, same question. Um, so are you prepared, um, need be to make any uh, reductions in your budget? If she has to. If we you have, have to. to, we could, we will do our part of whatever is asked to do. <laughs> the, well, that question comes from some things that, that we've received on on revenue projections on mm -hmm. uh, the whole range really from gas tax to income tax to property tax to et cetera uh, there, there's uh, there, nothing seems to be going up I guess except our costs um, so okay well I'm asking the same question of all departments so that's really the glad your 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 uh, fair went well. I I I'm done with my part of it, and I did not spend time down there. They had the front gates locked, and you guys wanted to limit uh, public participation. Yep. So uh, I I uh, was down there a couple times around the track and some things like that, but I didn't didn't go over there. Uh, the show in the one area, the one uh, what I call the horticulture building, mm -hmm. it seemed like that worked. People brought their exhibits in, you judged them, and they hauled them out. Yeah, we had um, we used a scheduling system, Sign Up Genius. So we had three families every 15 minutes sign up. So we had 400 families come within a two day period. Um, as closed judging so you're right they were judged and dismissed and that uh, worked well and we didn't feel like anybody got exposed or so yeah a um, lot of planning but it, yeah well the the, the the just think people you know they just look forward to that exhibiting someplace mm -hmm. Yeah, I was glad the kids, they worked so hard all year round on all those projects and with their animals and the livestock, so I'm glad that uh, we had the opportunity to do that. Mm -hmm. How many 4-H members are are in this this area? Um, for Vigo County, we usually run between seven and 800. We've been growing gradually. Um, the total 4-H and the youth education program throughout the year, we usually reach about 2,000 kids. We um, are in all the community centers and the after school programs. We do projects with all of them. So it actively enrolled and participating in the fair, probably about 760. That's really great. Yeah, it's a great, great program. That is up, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Christy, I just wanted to clarify for something. And mm -hmm. I don't, I'm assuming maybe this might be, might have some savings and it's not a lot this year. But like the after school, I mean, since school was out, did you still, you weren't using any of those part-time people then? We did not. We worked um, with Camp Rave and we still worked with our educators and provided three. We worked with three um, where normally we'd have like six that we did at those programming. So that was half of our internships that we normally do for the summer program. So they have some summer, not big, but they do have some part-time. And yeah. I guess that's the other question because, you know, we increased the, it to $12 an hour last year. Yeah. And maybe just to clarify for something or clean it up, is that working? Because what, what we do is we end up dividing your hours down. Sometimes your hours, the amount of hours you get goes down because we've increased the salary. Did, is that working? I mean, I'm assuming this year it's going to work out because of Yes, it did. It, it <laughs> but in the future... 
we may have to adjust for that if things go back to normal. Um, yeah. It looked like it was going to work. We were watching that closely. Because you really only had, you had 2,369 hours. Yep. Is really what you had for what I consider your part-time temporary right. summer mm -hmm. on here. So yep. okay. I just wanted to, I'm assuming she may have some savings from that. This, yes, we this will year. have. Not yeah. A lot, but in the future, if things go back to normal and we go back to if you increase part time or something, we really need to make sure we're adjusting adjusting yeah. that they're getting enough hours in their budget. Right. For the part time people. Mm -hmm. Yep. We'll also have savings this year from our um, mileage expense. We haven't traveled um, for the last three months. It's been frozen. So on the Purdue side so we will that will reflect in our county mileage budget there'll be savings this year that we won't have, have next year if things are back to normal I make sure that they, yep we've not really talked about too much and I want to make sure that we mm -hmm. thank you for that uh, that's one of the areas that we recognized as possible it travels not a big thing supplies gas um, as potential savings uh, from this year and next year I suppose add them back in if we need to okay. Our, it's difficult predictions difficult. Um, so I guess I just got one more question me um, you got, you're gonna go ahead with these uh, online streaming shows next year you think even if it's a it's a live show yeah i think that people really like to have them both options some extended family that don't live uh, could jump on and watch if we can find a way a sponsorship or uh, funding for that we will maybe, continue maybe some sponsorship mm -hmm. okay all right yeah what what would uh, a sponsorship cost do you think uh we have sponsors for virtually everything we do at the fair, but this uh, Purdue's music department actually came and set up the video. I guess they have experience streaming um, music. I didn't know that, but the videographer we got from Purdue's music department had for each experience and used to judge shows, so they knew exactly what they were doing. I think it cost us about $3,000 um, to stream each of those shows because we had to pay for mileage and hotel and per diem for food for that person for that employee to come and do that but I did price locally with ISU and with WTWO because I thought they might uh, WTWO I thought their revenue might be down from ad sales and stuff but they weren't able to do do it um, affordably for us so all right any other questions thank you Yep, I thank you all for your support for our programs. Christy, I wanted to jump, just not uh, part of uh, the budget thing, but I'm just thinking sponsors for your Boot City. I bet you Rod, Rod might pick that up for you because he spends a lot of money. Yeah, he sponsors, I think, some of our awards already. Yeah, yeah. I know he does, but he's, I know uh, he's just expanding his, uh, his uh, advertising budget now. So. We will definitely so reach out. Yeah. <laughs> we always take all the sponsors we can get. For sure. Thank you for that. I'll, I'll keep thinking and let you know. Super. Okay. Anyone else on the agenda today? Juvenile Center. Oh, Juvenile Center. Yeah, they rescheduled. We all have right. a few. Wait, my husband and I have yeah. a few. Yeah. So we're doing it today. I guess he, re he reached out to Calista to him. Okay. Okay. Good. Well, that's good. Stuff. I'm good. I'm good. And then we got the court at three. Court tomorrow. Oh, that's tomorrow. Wow. I could put my glasses on. I can see so much. She's big here and gives all hard things. Parks, adult probation, drug court, you know, public um, defender, juvenile court. Really. She all I was going to tell you, uh, last week I went to the graduation ceremony at the juvenile center. Oh. It was extraordinary. I went to the first one. So it, I, it was I really, oh, it made me cry. That little guy worked himself 
so hard, and he, a little guy got his um, got his high school diploma. It was really good. If you if you've seen the first one, that young lady was very impressive too. She went from like a freshman from a sophomore to her senior year within the time she was in there, and so because it's based on you getting your Credit stuff done, down. and she did it within five six months. It was just be quiet. He's here. <laughs> Do you want us to pat? Would you like for Do Judy? Huh? Would you like for Judy to pass that stuff out, or did you bring? Uh, what have you got? Because we've been cake? giving him a packet of each one, so. Excellent. That's your other one. That's the general fund, and then that you want that one too. That's your new, new fund, and I just. Juvenile. Salmon. Norm, I was just actually bragging about your uh, graduation ceremony for the young man last week. That was extraordinary. It was Thank you. Wonderful. I can't hear very good because of my deafness, but I heard that. Thanks. It was great. Okay, so this is my first time, so let me know what you want to know and where you want me to start or how you want me to start. Are there? Who's chairman? Well, Mr. Chairman, my name is Norm Lottermook, director of the Juvenile Center, and I thank you for the opportunity to speak to you concerning the budget. And uh, what you have before you is a budget for the general fund, uh -huh. which is attached to a couple of letters. Um, I can go over some changes in that if you'd like for me to, to start there. Start there. Yes? Yes, start there. So here's the deal. I lost my hearing in the Marines, so if I say, what'd you say, it's because I can't hear you. Okay. All right. So when I received this budget, um, the first... Uh, That's cool, thanks. When I received the budget form, uh, one, the personal services was not filled out. Uh, you know, uh, so I can't begin to address those. That's obviously up to the purview of the council on if we're gonna be receiving pay raises next year or any of that. So I'm not going to talk about um, uh, personal services or you know, the 100 series line items, if you will. Um, but if you go to um, nothing has changed until you get down to um, the three series, um, your line item of three, five, four, five, zero building repair, that was at to $7,500, I think, last year. We increased it to 12000 we, we just, I mean, that's, it, it's just real simple. Uh, the building is just aging. Um, big building repairs, obviously, will go hopefully through the commissioners, <laughs> hopefully. Uh, but smaller building repairs, like when we just got done making the bunks safer so that they're not, um, uh, that a detainee won't have the chance to harm themselves, you know, that obviously costs money. Um, and so there's constant repairs and upgrades that we need to, to, to happen to that facility. Um, and so 
we've asked for a little bit of an increase there from 7,500 to 12,000. You know, I have no specific, um, no specific uh, projects, but for those that I explained to you when we went through everything from the unsanitary floor that needs painted uh, to replacing the locks on the cell doors because they don't even make the parts anymore, they're so old, to placing meal or cuff ports in the doors uh, to, to various upgrades of, of security and camera systems that we have to replace continually. So that's the reason for that increase um, in, in that line item. If you go down to uh, the four series, which is capital outlays under new equipment, there's the big one. So $125,000. And so uh, where did I come up with that number? Well, it, it's a swag. It really is. I've received three and I'm waiting on a fourth budgetary estimate on a complete uh, replacement um, and not really an upgrade, but it is an upgrade because they don't make the equipment anymore. It's all digital analog. Or it's all analog, not digital. And so uh, for our security system, and this is everything from some of the door swipes that <clears throat> the court system, court staff, clerks, and probation uses uh, to the uh, call uh, buzz in doors, if you will, that are in the secured area. Uh, to and including the CCTV, closed circuit television, and the cameras. We've had a, a situation where a detainee uh, was in an altercation um, back in February, and, uh, and in May there was a, a complaint made to the county attorney, uh, and to my office, and to Sheriff Plassey's office, and internal investigation was conducted and all that, but when we went to pull the video, we couldn't pull the video. The video self erased at 83 days, and that that's really unacceptable. I mean, if you if you look at body camera footage uh, requirements, especially in Indiana, the tort claim notice is 180 days for a government agency. So we should be able to maintain those records for 181 days, and uh, our uh, our uh, storage system that we have, the DVD, if you will, that the computer programs are hardware that we have that stores that uh, camera system and all that, it, it doesn't hold more than 80 days. And so we, we've got to upgrade that. I mean, it's just, it's a liability begging to happen right now. And so um, some of the, the bids I've gotten, or not really bids, I should say, I mean, back up some of the budgetary estimates, they range about $170,000. But most of the companies are willing to do like phases, uh, like a phase one, phase two, phase three, phase four, or phase three, whatever we can afford uh, to be able to, to pay for that, or to do the whole thing in the first year, but then make payments, not really even bonding it. They just will sign a contract with them, and then we just pay them, and they they do it, every, you know, do the upgrades. And so I've got some of those. I'm waiting on, um, you, you can't bid a project out until you have your first payment in your line item and until we get something in that line item I can't go and bid it out I can't go and see what we're talking about so the total cost yeah it may reach hundred and sixty thousand um, dollars but if I can get something in that line item uh, somewhere between 50 and what I've got requested then um, we can work on bidding it out this fall I've talked to the county attorney about trying to do that and then in January, when the budget takes effect, then we would have revenue that would be in that line item that we could begin start making either payments or writing, getting contracts written with the commissioners to be able to upgrade our security system. That's really the, you know, besides some of the sanitary things uh, that like uh, taking care of the floor, uh, some of the cells, uh, this security system is huge. I mean, it protects the detainees. It protects us against liability for potential lawsuits. Um, you know, what this detainee claims could have happened, but for the fact that we had reports that we wrote. We have no video evidence at all. And so, uh, so, so we just need to, we need to move forward with the, 
an upgrade, um, a replacement, I should say, not really an upgrade. It's not like we're wanting something better because what we got's okay. What we have is not uh, not adequate and is uh, substandard, and we need to replace it uh, yesterday. And so uh, I would urge the council to consider placing some money at your discretion, obviously, in that line item so that we might be able to, you know, uh, pay for uh, a replacement of the security system. Uh, the one thing I did want to mention in that number one series that we talked about, the uh, personnel committee, is that what is, they heard a, uh, they heard a hearing where I spoke about changing some positions at the juvenile center to give parity to the jail. Um, we have a problem at the juvenile center with supervision and not that the people there are bad supervisors, but when those people that are supervisors are off, there's nobody to take their place and to step in. And so at the jail, they have positions called corporals. And so we would like to implement those same positions there and not hiring more people, just taking four detention officers, moving to the corporal rank, and then taking the current sergeants that we have over there and giving them parity pay with what the sergeants are at the at the jail. And so um, part of that letter, I think, maybe I gave you may mention something about that. I don't know. If not, I have a, a letter I can hand out that addresses that issue for those that weren't aware of it. If you're talking about this one. Yeah, did they get that one or no? Yeah, we they did. Okay. We yeah, I'm sorry. So... Yeah, so on that letter, which is, this, I think, the second one, um, you can see that the jail has correctional officers, corporal sergeants, and a senior sergeant, um, and our juvenile center has detention officers. Then we have a blank spot, shift supervisors, and senior supervisors. And so where that blank spot is is a position that we need to fill in as like an assistant shift supervisor, someone to to uh, help run the shift when that supervisor's off. Uh, the pay is is listed as a size that's per hour. That's on the 2020 salary ordinance. So obviously that would be a little bit different uh, for next year. The paragraph below, which shows um, based on your salary ordinance that they're listed as uh, what's called Civ pole B and Civ pole A, and so yeah, well, yep, that's what they are. Public, what police something? Yeah, I don't know what it is. Department of Labor. Okay. I looked it up once, but whatever that P-O-L-E means. So it's just moving four people from uh, what I propose the council do um, is to move four detention officers uh, from an A to a B, uh, which is corporals, keeping in parity with the jail, and move the four shift supervisors from a B to a C, which would keep them in parity with the jail. And then the last thing is I have one supervisor that is a sergeant that I would like to, for all intents and purposes, give him a stipend. Um, he does a lot of extra work, uh, does computer work with what's called Quest. He compiles all the data for the use of force reports that we do over at the juvenile center, um, compiles all the training records uh, internally, um, just does a great deal of work for us. Um, a lot more than what the other supervisors do. And so instead of trying to create a position and get Erwin and Wagner to approve that and go through that process, I thought that maybe a stipend for him at the end of the year or whenever you guys chose to pay it of some measure for the extra work he, that he did. So I'll be happy to answer any questions you have. Um, 
about any part, whichever you want to talk about. I, uh, I have a question on the $125,000. Okay. Okay. Yep. Um, does this include any other renovation? Does that? Yeah. No, sir. Okay. So the, 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 the quotes I've, or the estimates I've gotten have ranged really more than that. They're 160 to 183,000. Yeah. But I was going to try to use some of the non reverting money, which we'll talk about in a second. Yeah. Uh, to try to help pay for that. And then additionally, um, I was just trying to get it on the agenda, you know, get it in the budget, something. Um, some of the uh, estimates I've received talk about 60,000 a year for three years or 50,000 a year for three years, something like that. So a reduction by the council of this 125 down to something more palatable on your part that could help pay for the next three years with supplemented by some of my money, I think would we be able to have a, a brand new system at the end of three years. Is there th anything at your facility on a remodel? You said locks, right? Oh. You uh, said... To uh, remodel? Yes. Well, um, so... The floor. The yeah. Uh, uh, the, is the rest, how, how is the rest of the building maintenance, I guess? Well, let's, uh, let's back up to where we first walk in. We... Uh, we have a washer and dryer that's a residential washer and dryer. We need to buy commercial. Okay. Washer and dryer's lifespan is 5,000 loads. We do 4,463 loads a year. And so that's going to last us about a year and a half. So a uh, washer and dryer is about five to eight grand a piece. That could, that could pay for some, well, not this money, but building maintenance money or my non-reverting money would help, help pay for that washer and dryer. Number one, it would do less loads. It would require less work of the staff, which would freeze them up to do other work. Um, that's just a start. The floor, um, there have been articles written by other detention facilities where if you have a porous floor, like concrete floor, and it's not kept painted, that uh, there have been lawsuits filed where kids have gotten fungus or have toes amputated because of infections uh, because they get, uh, they can't, they pick up infections through the, uh, through the porous nature of the concrete instead of it being covered with the surface. So I had one estimate given to me, it was $54,000 to resurface the floor and repaint it, which I think was absurd, but still I, I wanted to see how much we were talking. Even if we just do it ourselves or have maintenance do it, the paint costs are gonna be into the couple two or $3,000 easily for that. Um, the insulation above the rec room is falling down. Uh, because basketballs get hit up there. So we need some type of covering over the insulation. The exterior rec area, the bricks are separating because the top of it wasn't sealed properly. So the lime is seeping out through the bricks and causing it to fail, which makes it structurally uh, unsound. So I'm looking at a, at a um, structural engineer to come in to give you a quote to tell me what's going on. It's a back stairs. As you walk up the stairs, the separation of the back wall which is the south wall compared to the remainder of the building, is separated about an inch to inch and a half. So something is giving way. I don't know what, but something. Um, the I-beams that go across the outdoor rec area are oxidizing, they're rusting because they're not being maintained. The exterior door of the rec area is completely rusted and won't even open. So we, we need to get that replaced and do some maintenance on that. Uh, uh, you know, just, that's just a, off the top of my head, some of the things that that hopefully this non-reverting and the commissioners will be able to address uh, as far as, I won't say remodeling, but, you know, re renovations or upgrades or maintenance. Uh, priority right now is the security system. I'm sorry? The priority right now would be the security system. So, yeah, I mean, no, no bricks have fallen yet. So I would say that, and, and to be honest with you, with COVID and everything, I've not even got a hold of like, like a wall beezer or some structural engineer to come in to look at it, to say, don't worry, this happens. Or, oh my God, you, you got to worry. But our biggest liability right now is a security system. 
Um, we have no protection for the children. Strike that. We have protection for the children, but it's lacking. Uh, and it's, it's um, you know, we, we have cameras set up that, are, that, are, are, that fade in and out, or they turn black on you in the middle of it. Um, and our recording devices don't hold that information. So I would say that if we had a priority, that's it. We operate our doors off of a button system that's on a, uh, on a board that they've drilled holes and put other buttons in because things don't work. And so we're trying to make it so there's like the jail, the current jail has a touch screen and that opens doors and it does everything. So what I did was I contacted our vendor that we currently have, had them give me a, an estimate, contacted the current vendor the jail has, they gave me an estimate, and then the brand new jail, their security, the uh, company that won the bid, I had them come down from Wisconsin and then they gave me a, uh, an estimate. And, and, but for the first one, the last two are almost identical. Uh, 170, $180,000 for the, to upgrade. And that's also putting some additional protection for the probation officers. There's no cameras in those hallways. Um, so I thought that we needed to have something there and to, to increase some of the outside cameras as well. We're kind of lacking out there. But I would say if, if you ask what, you know, for me to triage things, I think that the security system or security uh, is, uh, and, and recording devices are, are a, a dire need. So you don't necessarily need $125,000 right now. You just need something in that line item to get the ball rolling. Yeah, so um, most of the estimates I've received come with like options. So if you want to do all of it, it's 180000 if you want to do this much, it's 96,000. But if you want to add your option one, it's another 16. Or we can wait till next year to do that. Gotcha. You know, so um, if you said, hey, we'll put 60 in there and we can do that for three years, then you could in three years cut that to zero because I won't need it after three years. And that would be, you know, 60 grand for, th or, or if you did 50 for three years, you know, or you can appropriate 180 right now and pay for the whole thing one fell swoop and be done with it. But I mean, if, if the revenue isn't coming in or if you don't think it's going to come in or if, which I, I know there's concerns about that or um, if you'd rather phase it in instead of just doing it, then, you know, you could lower it to whatever you felt and then but without something, it's hard for me to bid it out and go to the commissioner and say, hey, I'd like to bid this project out when they say, well, how are you going to pay for it? And there's a big goose egg in the line item because we can't even statutorily, you can't bid something out unless you have a way to pay for it. Right. So at least this, and the good thing, if it is good, is if you appropriate it, uh, we, we can't spend it without the commissioners doing a bid process and, you know, it's, so, and it will, what we don't spend will always revert back to general fund. So if you appropriate, you know, put a hundred grand in there and we get done what we can get, what we don't spend, we'll go back to general fund. And then I'm not interested in spending everything, just what it takes to d get the job done, you know. Mr. President, I don't know, um, Chris, I don't know if uh, you uh, fellows Vicky, went into Vicki, you better speak up. Norm's having trouble hearing you. Oh, yeah. I have. I can almost not talk. I have allergies. Um, I took a tour of the place, and I can't stop thinking about that south wall falling off of the building. I mean, it's really bad. It's bad. I mean, yeah, we took a tour. you could hide yeah. stuff in there. Maybe, maybe you have. I don't know. But, I mean, that place needs fixed up. Well, I think what they did was they filled it with caulk and then painted over the top of it. Well, that was it. a pretty bad idea. Yeah. Well, I don't, yeah, I don't, I'm not sure caulk and concrete work well together, but no, it, it not, covered it up nice and neat. Not good. So. You know, I do think it's a, it's a, something we need to address. Um, you know, that this is how we got the jail that we currently utilize by not addressing it. And, and that's what I don't want to get into. 
um, I just don't want to kick the can down the road. I just don't want to say, well, it, it's, it's not important right now. And then in three or four years, you know, a brick falls on a kid or an I-beam collapses because of rust because we didn't, you know, didn't pay someone to come and scrape the rust off of it and get it painted properly. Um, you know, if where, where are your discussions with the commissioners right now? What? Where are your discussions with the commissioners right Concerning now? Concerning which? What? This? Uh, like the security? Yeah. Well, the um, maintenance on the building or so things like it, that. So um, I began taking um, what I felt were uh, important people, council, commissioners, uh, through the building to show them some of my concerns um, early on. And every one of them, every all three commissioners, uh, said that you know they didn't realize that 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 the crack was in the back wall. Um, they didn't know that the ceiling is, was falling down. Um, they didn't realize that the floor was as bad as what it was. Um, I, I don't think that they intentionally didn't maintain it, but they see there's a need. And what their request was was to get some quotes. This is actually from Brad Anderson. Um, Commissioner Anderson said, uh, get some quotes, um, prioritize what you think you need to have done, and then we'll just do what we can with what we have budgeted. Okay. And, and so that's, so, but before we paint the floor, <laughs> you know, we got to get, we got to get a security system. You know, we got kids that aren't being videotaped when they're within two feet of the door and the boy, you know, uh hurt himself so we we've got to be able to get that that video on them so that those detention staff can can monitor you know at the jail they open the door and there they are uh but we have to track the movement of every detainee every 15 minutes every 15 minutes where are you where'd you go you had supper nope went to the shower we're on the phone nope we're at rec. No, we're in school. Every 15 minutes, we have to log where those kids are. So there are times when they're in their cell and we do a head count every 15 minutes. They will lay on the floor by the door so they can talk to each other under the door. We can't see anything but their ankles because the cameras can't get over to the door. Uh, so they're, you know, we, we got to replace those. When the lights are off, it's like watching, you know, an old you know, video at night, you just can't, you can't see anything. And we've got to change that. We just, that just, uh, give me chest pain. There's a lot of liability there. So security wise, I'm addressing that now, uh, improvement, if you will, my conversation with commissioners have been, get us a list and get us uh, some priorities. Um, and I'll be honest with you, I've not got a hold of the structural engineer yet, which is what uh, Commissioner Anderson suggested, um, but I'll probably get a hold of him within the next 30 days to see what he says about the building itself. Do what's our number of inmates right now? How many do we have? Yes. Um, today, I think there's 13. And how many out of county? Uh, it changes, but I think there's two today. We've had as many as six. We had, uh, at one time, earlier this spring, we had, I think, 19, and or we had, no, we had 22, and six of them were for out of, out of county. How many counties are we servicing? How many counties are we what? Servicing. Oh. Well, <laughs> I sent a letter to uh, 10 different counties, I think it was, uh, letting them know that we uh, accept out-of-county detainees if they need a place for theirs. But we take them from Fountain, Warren, Putnam, Owen, Clay, of course, Vigo, and Sullivan. We're half the cost of Southwest Youth Center, which is in Vincennes. Um, so people that normally go there are now bringing uh, 
bringing their detainees here to be held. We provide things that a lot of other folks don't. I make them go to school. So they, they get up and go to school every day. Um, meetings or court is done through Zoom. So since COVID hit, we can do Zoom meetings. Uh, so, you know, we're able to, we can transport. So there's, there's a lot of things we're able to do that other detention facilities quit doing when COVID hit. We quarantine all of our detainees for a period of time, vet them, take temperatures before they're put in the general population, and then we do that with all the visitors. Any other any other questions of council? Okay. All right. Well, I think there's uh, there may be hope. So we'll see what we can do here. Uh, that's why I was just trying to figure out what we wanted to coordinate with the uh, commissioners. Um, building maintenance their building maintenance been helping you a little with some things currently oh yeah so um with respect to where a detainee had attempted to injure themselves uh, on a on their bunks they just recently finished the projects of putting angle iron in to close those holds up they're they're called anchor points in jails and so um and that's what this is it's a jail for kids so we are eliminate all the anchor points and all of the the bunks they put the angle iron in and then uh, rounded it off so they couldn't hurt themselves we just need to paint those that that well that's we'll take care of that that's not a big deal they've been coming over doing doing stuff yeah helping out um, mr president i i would like to say that i you know it, it, we're talking about um, deterring crime and I think this is where we start and I consider this to be an extreme priority to get that juvenile center in shape and to um, see what else we can do uh, Norm I think you're on the right path I was so impressed with what you have done in the short amount of time that you've been there and I talked to the, I talked to the people who were there, the young folks who were there, and you know they they are encouraged uh, to see the young graduate that you had, the ceremony that you had. You know I've been around here a long time. I've not seen anything like that for a while, and and that was terrific. This is the place we should put our money. This I this appreciate great. that. We just had a kid graduate. We've had probably. Uh, 30 credits in high school given since January. Uh, we have one kid that's just waiting on a PE credit and he would graduate or we'd have our third graduation since I've been there. So that's that's kind of important. We're starting, I've got a meeting set up with the school corporation to establish a, it's called S, uh, uh, HSE now, it's a GED, high school equivalency. And so we're gonna be, hopefully become a center to to be able to give the test. And also, if a kid gets there and he's 17, doesn't have very many credits and doesn't see that light at the end of the tunnel, at least he can go over here and get his uh, GED, if you will, and, and be able to test for it while he's there. And everyone else, even you know, the boy that's lacking uh, the credit for PE, he's from Owen County. But that boy's got nine credits since he's been there. So he's went from a sophomore a junior to a senior and is just begging to try to get that last credit so when he gets out he'll have his diploma he can do all kind join the military he can do whatever you know he wanted to do so we're we're meeting with school corporation about getting pe credit um because they participate in pe every day they have people from hamilton or hamilton from union hospital the athletic trainers and stuff they come here and teach it the problem is is the school won't recognize that as a class unless it's taught by a teacher so we've got to get a teacher to oversee the program then we'll get PE credit so we're trying to work that out now and then we'll be able to have um, we'll be able to have it all we've got four different social service programs that are coming there FSA Hamilton Center a mentorship program and then uh, one we're doing ourselves uh, called seeking safety 
that we put videos on and talk to the kids about. So, uh, yeah, we're making some changes, but it just takes a little bit. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, thanks. Yep. <laughs> so, do you have any more questions about the general fund budget? No. So, to confuse things even more, <laughs> uh, a few weeks ago, uh, I uh, went to the county commissioners and asked for the approval of a non-reverting fund for the purpose of collecting revenue that would be generated from um, out-of-county detainees being held at our facility. At the time, we charged $110 a day to hold the detainee, and then that money just went to the general fund. And so what I've requested is to capture that revenue um, and then to be able to use it for items that we need in the detention center. So I'm presenting to you, did they get a copy of that? Yes. Yeah. I'm presenting to you a, a budget that's handwritten that is a budget for the non-reverting fund that doesn't have a number yet. Uh, 4959 was made it. I did it this afternoon, I don't have a chance to do it, sorry. Yeah. So I don't, I, I don't, didn't so they hear. Finally yeah. that. So, this is for care of the, I don't know what we're going to call it, care of prisoners non-reverting or care of detainees non-reverting. I'm not sure what, um, what, what, Jimmy. Juvenile Justice Center non-reverting fund. Okay, that's even better. So, as you can see uh, from that budget, there's nothing in the 100 line items because the ordinance doesn't let us pay for salaries. Um, but under other supplies, Institutional supplies is 6,000. Detainee incentives, 2,000. Staff clothing, 3,000 for a total of 11. Education, five grand. Uh, under threes, building repair, 9,000. Again, we're back to that, what we need to fix. We can, now we have a couple different places to go to. Um, and then 5,000 in safety. Uh, what's that for? That's for handcuffs. Um, uh, masks, uh, shields, gloves, uh, belts, anything that has to deal with, uh, with safety of the, of the building, handcuff keys, um, mannequins to practice CPR, uh, defibrillators. We bought a brand new one. The other one was 10 years old. Thought we might want to replace it. And so we, you know, so the total is $30,000 on that non reverting fund. Now, uh, historically, since about 2016, um, we've we've got uh, between 28,000 and 40,000 annually put into that fund. It will, now that this non-reverting, we know the money goes in the fund, but I can't spend it until you guys appropriate it. So instead of me coming and bugging you every couple of months asking for something, I thought we would set up a budget and the money would be appropriated and in the budget, and then we could go forward with doing what we need to do with the money. Washing machine and dryer. Yeah. What? Washing machine and dryer. Yeah. Says for the operation of the center. The copy of the yeah. You got your money already. Well, <laughs> no, he wanted something else. What was the effective date of the fund? June what? 9th. Was June 9th was the effective date, and so they started putting money in on that date. What's the balance of it now? 10 or something? What Andrea's got, yeah. Yeah. It's effective June, like whatever. So, you know, this starts January 1. It's not in there yet. The receipts are not in there yet. She has them because they've not been named. She has one came in since then. Yeah, I, I, I know I've asked this before. What are we paying other jails for keeping our regular inmates now so we get 110 for a juvenile 
and we pay 35 to send somebody to Clay County. Is that accurate depiction? So, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, so, I, uh, July 1st, I increased it to $125. And you're, and you're half of Knox County, or Knox Southwest? Yeah. 125 makes me half of what Knox County charges at the Southwest Youth Village. Okay. Which is a lot bigger. It's, it's you know, 300 person bed facility. So it's, it's a lot bigger. We're not trying to compete with them. We're just saying, you know, if you're from, you know, park or somewhere like that, instead of driving all the way to Vincennes, you can drive here. We'll take your kid. We'll guarantee him school. Um, we offer drug tests now. We offer transport to and from court, of course, Zoom and school. Uh, along with all the social service programs we have. So, and we've never had a situation yet where we've turned people away or said, hey, we can't because we're, we're, we're full from Vigo County people. We've always been, this year, between 15 and 19. What's the capacity? 19-ish, 20. We can put a couple um, on the floor if we need to, but really it's, it's 19. Well, that didn't work out well. No, not well. So in a typical year, we expect to make about 40 grand. This budget's for 30. So 10 would stay in there and build up. It would help take care of some of those big projects. Maybe in a couple of years we could fix the roof or we could do something else that we wouldn't have to dip into some other budgets. But this, to let you know, just so if you're looking at this and you wonder what's going on, when you see de detainee incentives, what that is is um, every Friday, if the, if the child has been good for the week and has uh, moved up levels of behavior, we allow them a personal pan pizza, and so that's paid for. And if they do uh, work or credit in the school, uh, or they do work at the facility, we give them a candy bar. That's what this is paid for. And then if they get five credits or more in school, then they have lunch with the director, and that's what pays. That's what this pays for. And so that's a big deal for those kids. Believe it or not, get to have lunch with me, but they get to have a McDonald's hamburger versus the outstanding jail food that we provide. So that's what that's for. If anyone has any questions about that budget. That's just been going in county general for the last few years, right? Yes, yeah, since it, since they started, uh, we collect the money, it automatically goes to the county. Right. Yeah. Okay. We're just asking, you know, the commissioners agree to establish the fund so it goes in the fund, but we can't spend it without, without your permission. Instead of coming as I need something and then waiting for the agenda and all of the things that occur with government, I figured this would be the easiest way to do it. Establish a budget so you approve it ahead of time and we can go on with our business. Any other questions? Nope, I'm good. Norma, I appreciate the, the, uh, taking me through the facility. Thanks for coming enjoyed over. Enjoyed that. And uh, uh, thank you for your innovation, getting those kids, keeping those kids busy. Thanks. I want to thank all of you for coming over. All of you are able to make it different times, obviously, but at least you got kind of a, if someone asks you what this is for, you can have a firsthand knowledge of what we're doing with it. I enjoyed it a lot more than I did going to our jail. Oh. Saw a little hope there. Yes. We're hope. 
Any other questions for me? Uh, I think that's all we've got. I appreciate you coming over today. What do I do next? You're done. We're done? We're done for now. Thanks we're just for the gather, money. We're gathering information. <laughs> That it for today? Yes. We our schedule starts to go out at ten thirty with the parks. With parks. We have uh, parks, adult probation, drug court, public defender, juvenile court. Um, yes, because you have a bid opening. And courts. You have parks, CBB, building maintenance, adult okay. probation. Commissioners have been um, 1030 to 115. You have parks. CBB, Surely not going to take us two and a half. And building maintenance. Mm -hmm. I've updated the schedule on the website. On the website. Two hours and 45 minutes to go over parks. Well, at 11 o'clock or 1115. 11, 11, Dave Patterson's coming to speak. Oh, that's right. Just a uh, okay. discussion about, he won't probably bring anything, I would assume. It's just, we can ask him some questions. That's right. I knew. Okay. All right. I think, Calissa, you have 10, 30 starting parks, 11, Dave Patterson, 11, 15, building maintenance, and 1, 15, adult probation. That sound right? Building maintenance is 11.15, so we said 1.15. You have wrote down here 11.15. I have building maintenance. You scribbled in 11.15 building maintenance. Yes. Yes. And then I just received an email from Leanna Moore with the clerk's office. They're wanting to have the time on Wednesday. Which we won't get them in with the courts then since we're late. Um, we go ahead and do them at maybe 3? Yeah. 2.45? 3 o'clock. That all right? Vicki? Mm -hmm. Okay. Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah, so Wednesday is 1 o'clock the Sheriff's Department, 2 o'clock juvenile detention. 2.30 is EMA, and now 3 o'clock well, Juvenile the clerk. Juvenile detention, we just went oh, over. Oh, yeah, we just moved that one, so we I could know, actually. But they, they changed that today after the schedule. Right. So Confused one, enough? We can make it a little bit harder if you want to. <laughs> clerk. Okay. Good job to you, Clissa, for trying to keep all this in order. All right. Huh? Good job trying to keep all this in order. Well, now the clerk's not on there, so it's not totally up there. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Are we pretty well straight here? Okay. Any other questions for each other here? Having none, we stand in recess. I think that's him rolling across. Turn your mic.